Planning a trip to Los Cabos can be intense, especially if you're a first time visitor. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you all of our must know travel tips, including the very best things to do, where to stay and an answer to the question, is it safe? stretches of pristine coastline and sparkling water, Los Cabos is a must visit destination bursting with plenty of great food and colourful local culture. Hey you guys, it's Phoebe here from Little Grey Box with Matt behind the camera and on this channel we share with you all of our travel experiences and tips to help you travel well. Now if you don't already, be sure to subscribe and say hello in the comments below and if you missed our Cabo on the road vlogs make sure you go back and watch them now so you can see a little bit more of exactly what it's like and exactly what we got up to our video this week is sponsored by Southern Cross Travel Insurance and this is our first ever sponsored video so Matt and I are so excited we feel like we have officially made it to the big leagues and we just want to say a really big thank you to Southern Cross Travel Insurance for your generosity and support Los Cabos is located in Mexico on the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula. Now there are two main towns, Cabo San Lucas and San Jose del Cabo. These two towns are about a 45 minute drive apart and there is a 22 mile stretch of beach linking them and it is home to some really gorgeous beachfront resorts which we'll show you a little bit later. Cabo San Lucas is your no one party spot and a very popular place to stay. It is a hub of a adventure and underwater activities as well as some great pubs, clubs, restaurants and bars. San Jose del Cabo by comparison is much quieter. It features some gorgeous colonial buildings, the historical district and some really beautiful beaches too. At the time of our visit as Australians we were not required to get a visa to enter Mexico but of course it is really important that you check the visa information before you leave for Los Cabos. Now you guys, one thing you do need to know is if you are transiting through the USA, you will absolutely need to get an ESTA. That is something you can easily do online and you need it, not just if you're entering the USA to stay, but even if you're just entering to transit. The local language is of course Spanish, but we found that everyone we encountered spoke English. That said, it was a great opportunity for us to learn to speak a little bit of Spanish and we found it was actually really easy to pick it up. Now one thing I would recommend is just having Google Translate downloaded to your phone with the Spanish language ready to go. The local currency is of course the Mexican peso but we also found that US dollars were widely accepted. We didn't withdraw any pesos before we left instead we just used local ATMs to withdraw pesos when we arrived. We did feel we made a bit of a mistake there because Los Cabos and Mexico in general has a tipping culture so when we first arrived we weren't able to tip the first few drivers and hotels staff that we encountered. So I would recommend having a few you know, US singles on you, just a couple of dollars or a couple of pesos so you can tip until you're able to withdraw more money. And do just keep an eye on your menus because some places we went to the gratuity was already included. We flew from Australia to Los Angeles catching a connecting flight to Los Cabos International Airport. Now there are daily flights that go from Australia to Los Angeles and the flight time from LAX to Los Cabos was only two and a half hours. That flight from Australia to LA is quite long and quite grueling. We arrived at about 6 in the morning and decided to check straight into an airport hotel so we could spend the day resting and relaxing. That way when we got to our final destination we were already over the jet lag and we were ready to make the most of every single minute. And one quick pro tip you guys, if you are transiting through the US, especially through LAX, you will need to go through customs and border control collect your luggage even if you're just transiting and give it back to the airline airport staff. There are signs everywhere and plenty of staff so don't stress about it you'll figure it out when you get there just remember you have to do it. Los Cabos boasts around 350 days of sunshine each year you guys and we visited in around late November and we found the weather to be absolutely glorious. We did have a couple of unseasonably wild weather days where it rained a lot but other than that oh my gosh the weather was just stunning. Now if you are planning a visit the best time to go is considered to be between November and June. If you're keen on doing a bit of whale spotting you want to try and 
plan your trip for between December and April. August to October are considered to be your hottest months, but don't worry, if you're an Aussie, you'll be fine. And for surfers like Matt, you want to try and go in June, July or August to get the best swell. First things first, I always recommend that you organize an airport transfer to get you from Los Cabos International Airport to your resort or hotel as soon as you arrive, especially if you're doing a really long haul flight to get there. That one small thing is going to make a huge difference to your very tired, jet lagged self. Make sure you check your hotel or resort website because some of them offer free shuttle services and maybe that kind of thing could be an incentive for you and it could determine which hotel or resort you end up booking with. When it comes time to do a little bit of sightseeing and actually explore Los Cabos, you have a few different options. Of course, you can hire a car if you feel confident and comfortable doing so and it works within your budget. Otherwise, you can look into rideshare apps like Uber, which personally I believe is going to be your best option. It's easy, it's affordable, it's all done through the app so there's no guesswork. Just make sure that you have the app downloaded and your account all set up and ready to go before you leave home and make sure your payment method is set to go through the app not cash. That way you can avoid any potential of scams. There are local taxis, of course, if you want to go that route. I did read a few things online, people saying that they had had a couple of bad instances, so maybe Uber is a little bit more reliable. And of course, you can always organize your own private driver. That's the option that we went with and really enjoyed. It was nice just having somebody there who was already organized around our schedule and ready to go when we were. All we can really do is share our experience and our experience was amazing. We never felt unsafe. We had the best time. Now, of course, we followed the same basic safety rules that we follow anywhere we travel. We made sure that we used our hotel safe to store any extra cash we had, passports and valuables, similar kind of items. When we were out and about, we kept our bags close to us like we always do, keeping things to the front of us, making sure that there were no opportunities for pickpockets and of course, of course, we didn't do anything silly like get blackout drunk and wander off down a side street by ourselves late at night with money stuck to us. We just didn't make ourselves any kind of a target as per usual and we had no problems. We spent about a week or so in Los Cabos and that time went so fast. Now for Matt and I, it was a little bit of a unique situation because we were staying at three different hotels for two nights each to do some filming. So we were moving a lot and I think that really made the time go a little bit faster for us. It might have felt longer if we'd spent a whole seven nights at one resort exclusively. That said, oh, we had such a great time. I could easily have spent longer than just one week there. But if you only had time for a seven night escape and you stayed at one beautiful beachfront resort the whole time, that would be a really great amount of time. During our visit, we got to experience hosted stays at three very different spots. So I wanted to show you a little bit of a look at each one of them and what they offer. Marquis Los Cabos Resort and Spa was exactly what I was picturing when I first thought about going to Los Cabos and a kind of Mexican beachy destination. The resort is huge. It is an adults only, all inclusive experience. Every single one of their rooms or suites has a view of the water and let me tell you the views are nothing short of spectacular. The all-inclusive aspect was something we had never experienced before and it was really interesting. So your mini bar is all included and they refresh it daily. Matt and I even decided to put that to the test. One day we cleared all the chocolate and booze out of that thing and we thought, are they really gonna refresh it? And you know what? The next day it was refreshed. But one thing I would just say, just to give you a heads up, something I didn't quite realize was that you can't swim in the beach out the front of the resort. And as I understand, that's true in a number of those beachfront resorts. That is because the water there is just not safe for swimmers. And I'm a really good swimmer, so I was a bit like, how scary can it be? It's pretty sketchy. You don't want to get in that water. That's why the resorts have such beautiful pools. Viceroy Los Cabos was another one of those gorgeous beachfront resorts. And this one was all about the modern luxury experience. We were blown away when we first showed up and saw the incredible pools leading out to the beach. And then our room was so modern and high tech with loads of really cool touches like, you know, an Alexa and these lights that change and this really cool TV and this beautiful bathroom 
bedroom with two separate shower heads and of course the balcony was stunning too there was like a bath on there overlooking the pool all of these day beds you could spread out and relax and the whole thing was just something out of a modern luxury fantasy of course one of the highlights for us was the food i cannot get over how good the breakfast there was i think it was probably one of my favorite meals of our entire time in los cabos our final stay was at hotel el ganzo and this place was totally different to the other two it was in the quiet place i mentioned earlier san jose del cabo so it had a more boutique artistic cultural kind of feel to it the whole hotel has been decorated by all different kinds of artists there's this super cool hidden secret recording studio where all of these famous people have come to work and record our room was huge and it had amazing views over the marina and into the beachy areas and the food on site was nothing short of fantastic there's no shortage of great things to do in Los Cabos now Matt and I found it was the perfect place for all the things we love all those outdoor adventure based water based activities we just had so much fun but for us the highlights were definitely a sunset horse ride along the golden sun-drenched shores of Cabo a luxury sailing experience along the coastline a cooking class at Los Tamarindos a kayaking and snorkeling tour we did out to the arch and an amazing Baja Jeep day tour out to Fox Canyon with high tide sea expeditions I just told you about all of the amazing things there are to do in Los Cabos so of course now I have to tell you how important it is to have travel insurance. Now Matt and I actually have an annual travel insurance policy with this week's video sponsor Southern Cross Travel Insurance. Matt actually started getting travel annual travel insurance policies a couple of years ago when he worked out that it was a lot cheaper for us and it meant that we are always covered each year everywhere we go on all of our adventures at home and abroad. But travel Travel insurance isn't a negative thing, it isn't all doom and gloom. For us, it means that when we travel, we get to do so stress-free because we aren't worried about what might happen. Instead, we just get to focus on having fun. And those few times that we have needed our travel insurance, we have been so glad that we had it because those times always happen when you least expect them. Now, the food in Los Cabos did not disappoint. It was so, so good. I could not stop eating. It was amazing. And a couple of things I noticed right off the bat were the quality of the meals we were trying. I mean, we we had some of the most memorable meals we've had traveling. They were just great. The food was fresh. There was so much flavor and some real heart and passion into what people were putting on the plate. Another thing I noticed was how intensive the staff were and the restaurants and cafes were when it came to dietary requirements. When we would sit down, they would always ask us up front, do you have any dietary requirements we need to know about? And I know how hard it can be to travel when you have specific dietary needs. We ate at some amazing places, you guys, but some of our absolute favorites were sunset drinks at the Cape with the very best views of the arch, our cooking class and lunch at the gorgeous Los Tamarindos, and a delicious dinner at Cielo Mar, as well as an exceptional lunch at the absolutely gorgeous Flora Farm field kitchen. We were aiming for all-out luxury, decadence, and indulgence. So based on our experience, we didn't have a budget stay. We had more of a luxury stay. And as we moved through Los Cabos, I got the feeling that a lot of those kinds of places that you might want to look to stay at were very luxurious, a bit more high-end on the budget spectrum. That said, I definitely saw places in Cabo San Lucas that looked like they would be a bit more budget-friendly. Same with food and drink. There were more affordable kind of restaurants and dining options. I actually found Cabo to be a lot more dressy and fancy than I expected. I was thinking it would be a bit more like what I had experienced in Cambodia and Thailand where it's very laid back. But because there are those luxury spots and we were staying at some gorgeous hotels and resorts and dining at really lovely places, I would have felt uncomfortable if I was underdressed. Not to say I packed a ball gown because I didn't, but I packed things like this, you know, quite uh, nice, stylish, flowy summer dresses that were really lovely and breathable. Matt did not wear summer dresses. <laughs> Matt decided that he would wear some nice shorts and then he would wear like a sweat wicking kind of a top to keep him cool when we were filming and out sightseeing during the day. And then into the evenings, he would change into a linen collared rolled up sleeve kind of vibe. And that was really appropriate. 
One thing I noticed was that it did get a little cool in the evening, so I was glad to have a little jacket or something to put over my shoulders when we were dining outdoors. Other than that, we really needed swimmers, hats, SunSmart gear like sunscreen. We definitely felt that we needed our GoPro and we put that thing to very good use. Some really light, easy clothing that you can kind of put on over the top while you're poolside. Sandals and shoes you can slip into nice and easily and all of those kinds of clothing are going to be absolutely perfect. Alright you guys, and there you have it. Those are all of our must-know travel tips for visiting Los Cabos. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and you have found it useful. Now, of course, be sure to watch our three Los Cabos videos to have a more in-depth look at everything I have just mentioned. And if you don't already, be sure to subscribe and say hello in the comments below. I hope you have a great weekend, you guys, and I will see you next week with a brand new episode. Love ya!